The question is, consider the system of linear equations x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 10, x2 plus x3 is equal to 3, and 2x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 is equal to 5. Write down the corresponding aug augmented matrix. Use elementary row operations to put this matrix into reduced row echelon form. Hence, find all solutions of this system and give a geometric interpretation of your answer. So we've got four things to do there. We'll tackle them one at a time, hey? So the first part says to write down the corresponding augmented matrix. So an augmented matrix um, has all the coefficients um, of the x's on one side and all the answers on the other. So we'll just do that. There's 1x1, 1x2 and 1x3 add up to 10. No x1s, 1x2 and 1x3 is equal to 3. And 2x1s and 2x2s and 1x3 is equal to 5. And my augmented matrix looks like this. And we usually put a bar there to point out the fact that we have a matrix of coefficients and a vector of answers. That's why it's augmented. Augmented means um, it's had a bit added on. Well, the next part says um, to reuse, reduce, use elementary row operations to put this matrix into reduced row echelon form. Okay, so what we want to do is make this matrix as much like the identity as possible which means that in our finished product um, we'll hopefully get ones along the diagonal but maybe not um, it might not turn out quite that way the best thing we can hope for is that if you go along the rows one at a time starting at the top um, the first entry that's not a zero will be a one and there will be zeros above and below it um, and then you go down to the next row and you go along and the, the first entry that's not a zero will be a one and it'll be a bit further along and there'll be a zeros above and below it and so on and then all the rows of zeros will be at the bottom that's what the reduced row echelon form looks like and that's what we're aiming for the easiest way to do it um, is not to keep writing out that matrix because that um, with with the bars uh, because that's a waste of time we have got enough work to do without writing um, brackets on our matrix every time so I tend to write it like this so let's copy it 1 1 1 10 0 1 1 3 2 2 1 5 and I keep the bar there like this okay so let's have a look we want the first non-zero entry in the first row to be a 1 it already is so that's good that um, leading one it's called um, is also called a pivot and the action of producing the one and the zeros above and below it is called pivoting so we've already got a one there we don't have to do anything if it had been say a two I would have divided the whole row by two to get my one and now I want to produce um, zeros above and below well there's no above we already have a zero the first position below we want a zero where this two in the corner is so to do that, you usually get the row that's got your leading one in it and um, subtract it off of the other rows or add it onto the other rows to get zeros below. So we've got a 2 there, so we want to subtract 2 lots of row 1. So we'll get row 3 minus 2 lots of row 1 like that, minus 2 lots of row 1, and we'll put that into row 3. Okay, so we haven't changed row 1 or row 2. In fact, elementary row operations only change one row at a time. So 2 minus 2 lots of 1 is 0. 2 minus 2 lots of 1 is 0. 1 minus 2 lots of 1 is minus 1. 10 minus 2 lots of, sorry, 5 minus 2 lots of 10. So uh, 5 minus 20, which would be minus 15. Okay. So we've achieved um, a column of the identity in that first column. So let's go down to the next row. So we go into the next row and we keep going along until we come to the first non-zero entry, which we would like to be a 1. Now, if in a row below it, um, I, if I had got a whole lot of zeros um, and in a row below it there was a 1 earlier, I would actually shift that row upwards so that there was a 1 in the correct spot. So you basically find the next row that's got the earliest non-zero value. 
but in this case it is the next row already. So I would like a 1 there and zeros above and below it. So um, we've already got a 1 there, so that's good. We've already got a 0 below, we just need a 0 above. So I'm going to do row 1 minus row 2 and I'm going to put that into row 1. Okay, so uh, my row operation is take row 1, take and uh, start with row 1 and take row 2 off of it. So I haven't changed row 2 and I haven't changed row 3. So row 1 minus row 2. So 1 minus 0 is 1 and that's the reason why we use this row because the zeros aren't going to stuff up the leading one that I already did. Row 1 minus row 2 would give me 0 here. 1 minus 1 is 0 here. 10 minus 3 is 7 here. Already you can see um, that we've got an equation here. If we translate this back to an equation, it would be 1x1, 0x2, 0x3 is equal to 7. So actually x1 is 7, which we've already found out so far. Alright, so now we have our second column of the identity. So we move down um, to the next row and find the first non-zero entry. And it's here. And we would like this non-zero entry to be a 1. Currently it's a minus 1, so I'll need to um, times by minus 1 in order to get what I want. So I'm going to have minus row 3, and I'm going to put that into row 3. Okay, so um, that would give us, we haven't changed this row, have we? So minus minus 1 minus 15. So already we can see that x3 has to be 15. And we have one more operation to do. Now we have a leading 1, we would like there to be zeros above it. So we will do row 2 minus um, row 3 and we'll put that in row 3, sorry row 2. So you always put it back in the row that you actually started, that you're actually in. Okay, so 1, 0, 0, 7, 0, 0, 1, 15, we haven't changed that bit. And um, 0, 1, Okay, 1 minus 1 is 0, 3 minus 15 is minus 12. And now um, I have turned my matrix into the identity, which is as the best you can get for your reduced row echelon form. So we're done for that bit. Now the next bit of the question says uh, to find all solutions of this system. Okay, so let's translate this back to equations. So this first row of my reduced row echelon form says x1 is equal to 7. And this second row of my reduced row echelon form says x2 is equal to minus 12. And the third row of my reduced row echelon form tells me that x3 is 15. So my solutions are... So um, I'm just going to put that over here on the left-hand side. Hopefully you can follow it. In fact, there's only one solution, isn't there? The solution is that x1, x2, x3 is equal to 7 minus 12, 15. Okay, so that was easy. It says all solutions, just a second. No, my, my reduced rational form tells me there's only one solution. So um, that's good. Alright, the next quest part of the question says to give a geometric interpretation of your answer. Alright, well that means I need to interpret um, my original equations as describing sets of points in a geometry. I've got three variables, so that means three coordinates, so that means three dimensional geometry. And a single linear equation um, in three dimensional geometry describes a plane. So each of my three equations is a plane, and those three, any point that satisfies all three equations is a point that's in all three planes. So the solutions 
um, are all the points that are in all three planes and we have got one point in all three planes so we have found um, the intersection of three planes so the equations represent planes in 3D space meeting in a single point which is 7 minus 12, 15. You'll notice that sometimes when we do this we're a bit sloppy as to whether vectors are columns or rows. Uh, if we're using them as part of the matrix, they're always columns, the points are always columns, but sometimes when we put them in a sentence we'll just write them as rows. Uh, and that's the end of the question.